right guys, out with the A7R4 and the Sigma 100 to 400, just uh, at Scotney Castle, actually. So I thought I'd come down and get some autumn colours as they're starting to uh, come into play now. So I thought I'd test this lens out. I've also got the Samyang 14mm with me as well, so let's go and have a look. So as you can see here guys, um, the castle in the distance there, this is at 100mm. Um, I'd cropped it in there so you can kind of get a, a bit of detail and everything there so you can kind of see how sharp or whatever it is. Um, that's at 100mm at f5.6. This is at 200mm and uh, we're now sort of heading into the 6.3 range. Uh, but still very impressive. Such a compact lens, quick focusing and it's less than a thousand pounds so it's kind of a win-win situation if it works as well as I've experiencing it so far it's a pretty good um, pretty good lens for the money in fact it fits in your bag with other lenses rather than the 200 or 600 which is obviously a different beast but um, for me this is actually working out really well um, 400 millimeters as you can see here it's still nice and sharp and uh, you know just working really um, so that's the first sort of zoom test as such detailed shots of some of these leaves I think yeah colours on this are starting to look good so here's probably the most famous tree of Scotney Castle it's really really red um, it looks lovely at this time of year and uh, I've heard loads of people talking about it in the past um, even people asking for images of it so um, here's one of the leaves close up and uh, off I went for a little bit more of an explore do, do, do. Well, it's quite a bit of wildlife around. Mm. Some cool water's pretty still actually in places. The old boathouse. To the bridge, we can see the iconic shot, or one of the iconic shots of uh, Scotney Castle. There's the uh, little boathouse out there. Awesome. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, the water is looking very clear. <laughs> really clear. I can see the bottom, which is not very often. Right, so um, leaving the 100 to 400 on, here's a shot at 100 millimeters. So looking across the uh, the moat there, it still gives you quite a nice view and a sort of uh, quite compressed image as well, which is quite nice. Um, I thought, can it do some close-up stuff? And it does pretty well considering um, that was at 400 millimeters. I didn't quite have enough space. I just sort of uh, leaned back a little bit as well at 400, um, but worked really nice. I thought that was that worked quite well, especially if something's tiny. I mean that spider was probably about three to four millimeters in size. Um, more hen there, just on the moat, as you can see here. Um, just cropped in slightly there, uh, but, but that is at 400. But that's at f8 as well to give you a bit of depth. So I've popped on the Samyang 14 millimeter, and as you can see here, even with the wide angle 14 millimeter, I know this video is not about this lens, but I just thought I'd show you. 14mm f2.8 you can still utilize that lens even for some wide angle uh, sort of sharpish stuff and this is as close as I could get to that spider with um, with the 14mm as well but actually gives it quite a nice interest I thought a bit different um, because you might not notice and think why is it out of focus and you think oh that's actually the spider in focus uh, and this is kind of my shot of the day or for the castle perfect lighting um, lovely uh, relatively still water could have been like a mirror really but it wasn't um, but yeah so pretty happy with that let's walk around this way so you can see the castle 
Lovely colours. Sun's gone in typically. So over there a little bit, just a little bit of light on the castle will be lovely. It's pretty quiet here today, but obviously remember you get a National Trust um, membership, it's always good. Loads and loads of places to visit. Bowdoin Castle and Scotney being one of my two favourites. Knoll Park as well. All the deer. And there's all the leaves falling onto the uh, water now. From... Completely messy reflection. So it's actually better down the other end. It's actually really windy. So just have a little wander out into the uh, countryside a little bit more. So the castle's behind me, um, but they've got these trails that sort of go off into the woods and stuff. So I thought, you know what, have a look. Might be some wildlife if I can hear some chirping. So let's try out this uh, lens a bit more. I'll tell you what though really really like it because it's not heavy it fits in my bag with a few other lenses as well with no issues um, yes I know I don't quite have as much reach as I did before um, but with 60 megapixels it's not a huge issue so you know it's kind of a workaround but it's kind of I don't know it's nicer in the hand than the uh, 200 or 600 because it's not so bulky like I say it's just as a a lens that is half the price as well pretty much it's um kind of a no-brainer really in some respects really really enjoy owning it so far i've got a couple of weeks left to make a decision if i really want to keep it or not but i think so far i'm pretty happy with it it feels quite a nice range there's probably a water running down there and we only have to think back when we were using six megapixels or even 12 megapixels you know we had a 500 millimeter lens and we thought that was the the bee's knees and i'm using a 400 now and i've got 60 megapixels <laughs> you know so in the real world you know, it's good. I uh, haven't really had much issue. I thought, oh, it's an f6.3 rather than, say, the Sony 100-400G MOS, which is f5.6. It's not really an issue. Um, seem to be, even on a dullish day when the sun's gone in, I'm still... Um, that sort of ISO 200 to 400. So, absolutely fine. Ooh, it's like a little adventure. Where are we going? don't actually know. Oh. Some kind of hole. River. What's this then? Some kind of fire pit. Or something, I guess. Something's in there, it just moved. Not really sure what. <sighs> Unless it was just the wind. Kind of cool. As you can see there, Buzzard getting a um, hassle from a couple of crows as they normally do. Um, is one of the main house um, from a distance, the view that I've never seen before. Um, but walking around the gardens around out sort of the woodland side, you can actually look back at it, which is pretty cool. Um, there was a, a, a feather on the ground and uh, I picked it up and I thought, oh, stick it in a wooden post. That could look quite interesting. So nice bit of bokeh there, a nice sharp image of the uh, feather there. And I uh, did another one as well. I stopped it down a little bit, just to f8. Uh, it's minimum focal distance, which is one and a half meters at 400. And uh, there you go. So I'm uh, pretty impressed with uh, how well that worked. And uh, here's just a few photos of other shots that I took while I was walking around, basically. Um, again, the Boker uh, f6.3 at 400 worked really nicely. 
really circular it's very very nice and uh, that leaf there sun coming from behind look really cool uh, I autofocus shooting through some trees uh, working fine on the cow there um, as he walked into into the uh, to the right hand side there where the trees sort of branches you can see the sort of uh, out of focus section um, and then more colour which is lovely looking back down towards the, uh, the house uh, which is out, out of shot but um, just thought the lovely colours there and textures and things looked a, bit, a little bit different um, but yeah um, and also just to try a little bit of uh, high speed stuff so one five thousandth of a second f6.3 ISO 400 and the sun had gone in as usual um, but uh, that worked quite nicely uh, and then dragonflies there seemed to be loads it was a really quite nice warm day uh, and uh, even though it was windy um, they were about so um, managed to get one shot there which I was desperate to try and get he, he buggered off and it was the only shot I managed to capture um, and then obviously one of these I think they're dandelions aren't they um, yeah basically at its minimum uh, one and a half meters at 400 f6.3 lovely sharp image there and shooting down on the ground and then a couple of leaves here which I thought was really nice sort of color just a little bit of experimentation no flash and lighting with me or anything like that so I couldn't really make the most of it but um, just a little bit of natural light coming from under the trees and then Scotland Castle from different angles as well sort of around um, the southwest side I suppose um, there's a path that runs round and you can see through a gap there where the footbridge where I started earlier where I was taking pictures of the uh, spider and then a random rose just one and uh, basically uh, we um, we, I don't know it was me um, I had to go quite high ISO on this sort of ISO 640 just to uh, get enough light because the sun had gone in by then and, and uh, yeah so this was quite nice as well uh, sort of a green and yellow sort of tree halfway between thinking it's autumn and it's not and then here come the dragonflies so really impressed that actually got this quite easily actually I noticed messing around trying to get um, uh, dragonflies before you just have to be patient you have to watch what they're doing you have to see what they are um, their what do you call it their uh, location they, they sort of live in um, and they're very territorial so they basically patrol it patrol their land as such so managed to get these shots so they just come back to where they were so another one there scooting around but I thought she's flying away um, and uh, yeah so it is, it is quite easy to get them once you know where they're going to be going next so if they're flying around they will come back to the same spot again this shot here really impressed because the sort of golden colors behind works really nicely uh, as well kind of adding an autumn feel but a dragonfly flying in autumn, a bit strange. But anyway, um, that was those ones there. And then um, as I walked back up, I saw we still had some purple flowers and a few bees flying around as well. So it's definitely still warm enough for the insects. The bumblebee there. So this is shot at 120 frames per second. Um, and slow down a little bit, obviously, to match. Um, so yeah, it worked quite nicely. Trying to uh, follow the bees flying around. Autofocus in video works nicely, as you can see. I put it into sort of large spot, so uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool as you can see there. Be having a nice bit of lunch, um, but yeah. So generally, this lens I'm very very impressed for. I think it's nine hundred pounds, whatever that works out into dollars or whatever it is in your country. I don't know how much it is, but I'm very very impressed. It's got weather sealing. Um, obviously, it's not internal zoom. It's but it's really quite compact, like I said before. So. In the hand, lovely to hold, nice chunky grips, the buttons are well placed, uh, general build quality. It's got um, a weather gasket on the back of the lens, so when you put it up against the into, onto the body, uh, it seals it, so you've not got any worries about getting dust or, or water or anything through in that area, which is really nice. Um, as Sigma stepped up their game over the last 10 years or so um, for something that is. It's not an art lens, um, you know. It's not a high-end lens, really. It's it's more of a contemporary contemporary style lens, but just shows you the optics on it are very very good. So, really really pleased. Um, it is just a shame, like I say before in, in the other videos I've done about the 200 or 600. But the more I'm using this lens, I actually suddenly realise actually I haven't got to worry 
or think too much about going right am I going to take the 200 600 today or should I just take the RX10 Mark IV or should I not go with a big lens or should I take my, all my stuff out of my bag and only take the 200 or 600 because it's anything that fits in there once it's in um, but yeah so 400 millimeters seems to be pretty good and obviously when you've got 60 megapixels you can crop in nicely um, this is a bit of a heavy crop this one so you can see a little bit of pixelation there but uh, he was quite a long way away by the time I'd done that shot um, but yeah so really really good day even though it was a little bit dull in places and uh, also windy um, which is never a photographer's friend a lot of the time but uh, you know always make do keep trying so um, yeah Oh well, hi guys, um, so not a bad wander around, tried out that 100 to 400 a bit more, I'm actually really impressed and um, pretty good for dragonflies, so I've got some dragonfly shots which is, they're obviously going for a bit later this year, um, still quite warm, it's 17 degrees at the moment so I guess that's warm enough for a dragonfly to uh, carry on living for a bit more, but um, quite a few around, uh, the colours are starting to come out but typical, not much sun, so, but even though that lens f6.3 you're still getting some fast shot speeds so pretty cool um what else um build quality pretty nice for the money uh like i say it feels really nice in the hand it's light and you could utilize that lens all day on the a7r4 or any other a7 series cameras no problem at all so it doesn't seem to use any more battery power than any other lens as well so that seems to be pretty good uh, and it's sharp so yeah, anyway, off home to look at the uh, the photos now. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well, and check out my other new channel as well, which is just, you know, just general stuff really. Um, less photography stuff, but it's still quite fun. Um, okay, I'll see you soon.